So we have all of our backups now. We've talked about backup storage. Let's go through the process of restoring a site that's been messed up in some way from those backups. Let's go to this article and let's edit it. And we'll take out all of the blahs except for the first one. Save that. Then let's go to content, add content. And we'll add another article. This one will be called, we'll just call this another article. And we can type whatever here. This is a second article. Save and publish that. And then we'll go home. And now the unthinkable has happened. There is a second article on our one article site. Additionally, our real one article has been messed up and it's missing most of the actual content of that article. So something's gone wrong. We want to restore our site to its previous state. Specifically, we want to restore it to the state it was when we backed it up earlier. So first things first, we're going to go to configuration and we're going to scroll down to maintenance mode and put the site in maintenance mode just as we would if we were updating part of the site. Because this process is actually going to be very similar to running a site update. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work with the file system first, this tar.gz file. I've deleted the unpacked version of this, the extracted version of our public HTML directory because we don't really need to keep storing that on our local host. If we have the tar.gz file, that contains everything and takes up less space and we can extract it anytime. But right now, we want to restore the file system first. And we're going to do that by uploading our tar.gz file to our file system and then extracting it there and replacing everything. So first, we're going to go to our file manager, going to go to web root, and here's our website. We're going to just delete everything here. Make sure you're in public HTML or whatever your web facing directory is. We're going to select all of this and just delete everything. I should note that when we made the changes to our site, we created a new piece of content and edited another piece of content. We didn't make any changes to our file system then. Those were purely content changes. All of those changes purely existed in the database. But let's just do this on the assumption that maybe someone hacked our site and that's how the content got changed. And we don't know if maybe they also went in and hid a malicious file somewhere in our file system. So we're just going to remove everything and restore back to our backup. So what we need to do now that we've deleted the whole file system in public HTML is upload our backed up tar.gz file. And with that done, we'll close this back in our file manager. We'll reload the page and we have the tar.gz file here. We're going to unpack this now. So we have our full file system. Select that and choose extract. We'll extract it right here. And as usual, if you're using an FTP client, you may want to extract it on your own computer and upload the whole file system. Or you could upload the tar.gz file just like we did with your FTP client and then log into cPanel and extract it. Either way will work. Once you've extracted it, go ahead and delete the tar.gz file. And then, since we now have public HTML within public HTML. This is the lower level one. We need to navigate into this one and we need to move all of these files up one level so they're in the real public HTML folder. So we are going to select all, move, we're going to delete this so we're going to move them up one level into the real public HTML folder. Move files, and then we'll go back up one level. We see everything here now. Now let's delete this sort of empty public HTML folder. Looks great. Now our entire file system has been restored to its state when we backed it up earlier. If we go to our site and try navigating, everything should pretty much look right. We haven't fixed our content yet, 
but the actual website should be functioning correctly. There's an error here because I haven't updated certain things in my own install. But you can ignore those. The website itself is working just fine. Now our second step is to restore our database. Let's close our file manager because we don't need that anymore. We're going to go to PHP My Admin. Let's go to Databases. Go to our one article database. Let's click on Operations. And let's just rename this database. We'll call this Compromised. So we're essentially deleting our previous database and recreating it with a different name. That's going to free up this name, rather, for us to import our old database. And we could have just deleted that database altogether, but I like to save it just to be safe, make sure everything goes through, and then we can delete it afterward. Let's go back and create a database again. We'll call it one article, just like we did previously. This is going to be a blank database because we need something to import our old one into. Go back. Once you've done that, we'll scroll down and we're going to add a user to this new one article database. All privileges, make changes, go back. Now we have an empty version of the database with the correct name. So we're going to go back one last time to PHP My Admin. Let's just go back to the very beginning here, server localhost. We can click on databases find our one article database, click on it. There are no tables found. Let's go to import, choose file, find our SQL file, click open, and click go. On a small site, this may take 15, 30, 45 seconds. On a large site, it can take a long time. And here we go, import has been successfully finished. Now if we go back to our website, we might want to try going to update.php just for good measure. Click continue. This is just sort of letting Drupal know that we want to check and make sure there were no changes with the structure of the database itself, going from the current version back to our restored version. Looks like we're good, so let's go to the front page now. And our site is back to just how we like it with our one single article that comprises the entire thing. Again, when you're importing your database, you have to make sure that you remove the one that's currently there, but you need an empty database with the same name that you've been using. Then you import your .sql file into that empty database. And that's it. Now we've gone through the process of manually backing up your entire site, your file system, and your database. We've talked about storing those backups, and now you know how to restore a site from those backups.